Well, everyone, another week has gone by with little to no actual Nintendo news to talk about. But I do bring you some new interesting developments in the Switch 2 rumor scene that have been going around online this week. So we're going to go over that here today. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. It really helps me out. And subscribe if you're new here. I love seeing all the new subscribers coming in. It brings me a lot of joy to see that number tick up. We're over 100 subscribers, which I know seems like not a lot to a lot of people, but it means a lot to me. So keep hitting the subscribe button, share the video with your friends if you enjoy it. Hopefully they enjoy it too. And let's get into today's video. So before we get into all the Switch 2 stuff, today is the release date for Princess Peach Showtime, the first major non-remake remaster that's coming out on the Nintendo Switch this year. Currently sitting at a 75 on Metacritic. I got a chance to play the preview for it. I have a video going over my thoughts on that on the channel. It's pretty much everything that I said it was. It's a, it's a game that's made for kids, obviously. There is a lot of fun to be had there, but there's just not a lot of like sustenance and some of the issues that I was expecting to, to get ironed out by the time the actual release came around such as the frame rate and stuff apparently that stuff didn't really get patched out at least not right now so there are some frame rate issues but we are talking about new games coming out on eight-year-old hardware at this point it's kind of to be expected but anyway you should definitely give it a chance if you think it's something you'd be interested in just know that it's uh there's just not a lot of sustenance there. We did get one little confirmation with that in that uh, the director of the game is Etsunobu Ibisu, who is the president of Goodfeel, which the last game that he helped direct was the Mystical Ninja starring Goemon on the Nintendo 64, which is actually one of my favorite N64 games. So it's kind of exciting to see that he's back in the spotlight again, working on this game. And that game, Goemon released over 20 years ago now so it's like what has he been doing this whole time i guess he's been just doing his own thing but it's really cool just to see that his name is in the credits for princess peach showtime also releasing today was the princess peach showtime pastel pink joy cons which very well could be the last set of new limited edition joy cons we get for the switch let me know in the comments if you're planning on picking those up or not. I'm I'm all Joy-Conned out personally. I've got way too many pairs as it is, and I don't think I need any pink ones, but it'd be but let me know if you're planning on picking these up. Anyway, let's get into the Nintendo Switch leaks and rumors for this week. Again, as we're all sitting here waiting for Nintendo to finally drop the bombshell of news about what's actually going on with this system, we're left to to speculate and hear the rumblings that creak through the internet and make their way onto like your your 4chan posts and your reddit gaming leaks and rumors and some other places that usually this stuff comes up there's a notorious leaker his name is nate the hate he usually gets a lot of this information which is where a lot of the first rumblings about the switch getting delayed until next year started coming around and some other stuff has come up in regards to nate the hate and some of the leaks that have come out let's start with the nate the hate specific stuff pretty much the and his gaming podcast that he does a few days ago started talking about how that nintendo has been asking developers for footage and images of their switch 2 games for their upcoming releases which is something that nintendo likes to do right before they do a direct or they're getting all of the pieces in place to have a presentation for a either a general nintendo direct or anything related to them where they're going to be showing off a bunch of games. So if Nintendo was specifically asking developers for Switch 2 game trailers and footage and images and stuff, it's leaning in the direction of they're going to be announcing this sooner than later. So maybe we won't have to wait all the way until June before they finally start showing stuff up. One of the games that is apparently going to be coming to the Switch next year is Persona 6. There's a credible leaker named Midori who pretty much just leaks all of Atlas's stuff. He's very credible, talks about stuff all the time, and is always correct, or at least I'd say 90% of the time correct. And Midori has gone online and stated that not only is Persona 6 going to be a multi-platform game at launch instead of just being a PlayStation exclusive like Persona 5 was, but he was asked directly, is this game coming to Switch 2? Said yes, the game is going to be coming to Switch 2. It should be available on all platforms on the same time. So none of this like PlayStation and Xbox get the game on the same day and then you have to wait like six months before it comes out on the Switch should all be there at the same time, but it's supposedly coming out next year on all platforms, including the Switch 2. So this is kind of confirmation of one of the first Switch 2 games that we know of 
that's going to be releasing next year, which I'm not a Persona guy yet, but I'm very interested in taking games like this and being able to take them on the go. Seems like the perfect place to play these like 100 hour JRPGs. So definitely looking forward to giving Persona 6 a shot, especially if it's going to be coming to the Switch. Next up, let's talk about another Switch 2 rumor that's about the performance of the Switch. This isn't really like a a big, just breaking news thing. None of this really is like breaking news stuff. But we've known that Switch 2 dev kits have been out in the wild now. Especially if third parties are going to be working on making games available at launch. They need to have dev kits available as early as possible to get their games running on the new hardware. Well, another insider has claimed that the Switch 2 dev kits have gotten updates to them uh, to allow them to go, quote, one step further, uh, referencing the DLSS upscaling for Nintendo Switch 2 games. If you're not familiar with DLSS, which stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling Technology, which pretty much is where the games use AI to generate frames and extra graphical enhancements to make games run smoother. There are a lot of games that utilize NVIDIA's technology to boost the performance of their games artificially, and which really helps out if you're someone who plays games on PC when you don't have like the most latest and greatest graphics card and stuff like that, or maybe your computer is just not like the high-end performing computer. Like my personal gaming computer is not like some just supercharged PC, but using stuff like DLSS helps me hit the frame rates that I want to hit while I'm playing multiplayer games online. And the Nintendo Switch 2 is rumored to be using a new NVIDIA chip processor uh, that has DLSS built into it to help games hit performance targets like this. So think of like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom being able to be artificially upscaled to 60 frames per second or upscaled to 4K with a stable 30 frames per second you know stuff like that so this is great news going forward for what the potential for nintendo switch 2 games could be again this is something we've kind of already known about but just getting the confirmation that this is happening with the switch 2 dev kits means there's a lot of potential for what could be coming with the games that are going to be releasing at launch uh, for the switch 2 the next one's kind of like something that i've just thought about it's not really a leak or rumor there's nothing confirmed here but it was just another thing going around on gaming leaks and rumors talking about how uh, capcom is using their new improved uh, re engine which was developed alongside the resident evil 2 remake a few years ago uh, the new version of this for dragon's dogma 2 which also released today uh, but they're going to be using that engine to power uh, Monster Hunter Wilds and Resident Evil 9, uh, which are going to be coming out in the next few years. I think Monster Hunter Wild is currently set to come out next year. But the reason why I wanted to bring this up in a Switch 2 video is that usually I would imagine that with the power of the Switch 2 being able to rival that of modern consoles, I know it's going to be lower than like when you start talking teraflops and all that jazz that Xbox and Sony do, especially with a rumored PS5 Pro coming out this year, they're going to be more powerful than the Switch 2. But the Switch 2 is also not trying to hit the same targets that they are as far as like graphics and performance and stuff like that. So in its own way, the Switch 2 is kind of rivaling those systems. And with the DLSS built into the system also, it's going to help it hit performance targets and make it available to support more modern games. We know currently that the Switch 2 is capable of playing games like Resident Evil Village, uh, for example, but it does have to do it through cloud streaming. So I guess it's not technically the Switch doing it itself, but it's able to run it. And so I can imagine that with the bump in performance coming off of the Switch 2 and its new processor and using artificial upscaling and stuff, that games like Resident Evil 9 and the new Monster Hunter could potentially run on the Switch, which is just good to know that I mean, I, obviously they were going to make a Resident Evil 9 due to the success of the Resident Evil remakes and Resident Evil 8, but just the fact that there's a chance that it could be coming to the Switch, I think is just exciting because Resident Evil is such a fun franchise and I would love to see it come to the Switch, along with the new Monster Hunter. I know Monster Hunter Rise came out and it was a Switch exclusive for the longest time and Monster Hunter World was the last main Monster Hunter game for all platforms and it never came to the Switch. But it's just interesting to see all that stuff come up. But let me know in the comments if you want to play Resident Evil 9 or Monster Hunter or you think any of this stuff's legit. Before we wrap up though, I'm going to go over a poll that I posted last week. 
uh, asking, do you think that Metroid Prime 4 will release in 2024? And I was actually really surprised. 79% of you say no, that game is not coming out this year. And I'm actually kind of dumbfounded. I really thought everyone would think that it would. But anyway, that's all for this week. I know, again, there's not a lot of like sustenance with the Nintendo news or anything. Hopefully things will start to pick up soon with new information. But let me know in the comments what you think about Princess Peach Showtime. If you're playing it, if you're planning on picking up the Joy-Cons, let me know if you're liking it or not. Don't forget to subscribe whenever we start getting into like the real Switch 2 stuff later this year. I'm assuming this channel is just going to, my opinion, is just going to take off have videos going up as much as I can. But thank you again for all the support. I love seeing all the likes and I love reading everyone's comments and seeing the subscribe number just go up every time I refresh the app. It means a lot to me. But anyways, have a great weekend and I'll see you next time.